dreaming tasting breathing running moving feeling pain painting writing we cannot do any of these things without our body's nervous system in this lesson you will learn about the nervous system and its components reflex action and the structure of the human brain at the end of this lesson you will be able to describe the functions of the nervous system describe the fundamental unit of the nervous system the neuron explain the communication between the central nervous system and parts of the body describe the functions of the components of the brain describe the mechanism behind the movement of a muscle define reflex action describe the parts of the human brain and describe the function of the human brain we know that the nervous system comprises of the brain spinal cord and a huge network of nerves that are spread throughout the body the nervous system is responsible for sending receiving and processing messages in the form of chemical signals called impulses the main function of the nervous system is to control and coordinate voluntary activities like reading and walking and involuntary activities like our heartbeat and breathing also the brain uses the information it receives from the nerves to control and coordinate all our actions and reactions without it we wouldn't exist let's look into the fundamental unit of the nervous system the nerve cell which is known as a neuron let's understand in detail the structure of a neuron each neuron consists of three parts namely the cell body or cyton branched projections called dendrites and the long process from the cell body called axon the axon terminals of each neuron are placed near the dendrites of another neuron this gap between the two neurons is called a synapse all such axons or nerve fibers are bundled and enclosed in a sheath to form a nerve nerves are seen as thin threads that emerge from the brain and spinal cord and branch out to all parts of the body nerves carry messages back and forth similar to telephone wires let's analyze the different types of nerves there are three types of nerves sensory nerves motor nerves and mixed nerves these nerves carry information in the form of electrochemical signals called impulses to and from the brain and spinal cord to the muscles located throughout the body sensory nerves send messages from the sense organs to the brain or spinal cord so our sense organs provide the nervous system with information about the environment by means of sight hearing smell taste pressure and pain 
motor nerves carry messages back from the brain or spinal cord to all the muscles and glands in the body. Mixed nerves carry both sensory and motor nerves. When a neuron is stimulated, the dendritic tips of the nerve cell generate a tiny electrical impulse. This impulse travels from the dendrite to the cell body and then along the axon to its end. At the end of the axon, the electrical impulse releases some chemicals which cross the gap, called the synapse, and start a similar electrical impulse in a dendrite of the next neuron. This is generally how the nervous impulses travel in the body. This process continues till the impulses from the neurons are delivered to other cells such as muscle cells or glands. How does the muscle cell move after it has received action information from the nervous tissue? In response to the nerves electrical impulses, muscle cells have special proteins that stimulate the muscle to change both their shape and arrangement leading to muscular contraction. Have you heard of the term reflex action? Reflex action is an involuntary action by the body. We use the word reflex to describe a sudden action in response to something in the environment which is unconsciously done and is not a controlled reaction. So, how do we control and coordinate our hand to move away from the heat? The thinking part of the brain is located at the forward end of our skull and consists of dense networks of intricately arranged neurons. Neurons carry signals from the body to the brain. This is a relatively long process and may result in a burnt hand. To overcome this problem, the nerves that detect heat are connected to the nerves that move muscles. Now the process of detecting the heat signal is complete. This pathway is called a reflex arc. So, where is the best place for reflex arc connections to be made? It would definitely be the spinal cord as the nerves from all over the body meet in a bundle in the spinal cord on their way to the brain. Thus, reflex arcs are formed in the spinal cord itself. Although, the information input goes on to reach the brain. Reflex arcs in animals have evolved because the thinking process of the brain is not fast enough or as evolved to efficiently function for quick responses. The nervous system is divided into two systems, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Both these systems are connected and function together. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. Its main function is to get information from the body and send out instructions. Let's discuss the brain in detail. The brain is the main coordinating center of the body. It is a relatively small organ 
and constitutes about 2% of our total body weight. The human brain is a delicate organ and protected in a brain box called the cranium. Inside the cranium, the brain is contained in a fluid-filled space which provides further shock absorption. All the neural connections are concentrated in the brain. The cell body of the neuron is concentrated towards the outer region of the brain and the axon towards the inner region. This forms the grooves that are associated with the degree of intelligence. The central nervous system communicates with the muscles or glands in the body in two ways. The first is by reflex action. The second is by the action of the brain that allows us to think and take actions based on our thinking. The brain has three major regions, namely the forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. The forebrain is the main thinking part of the brain. It consists of the cerebrum and diencephalon. Cerebrum is the seat of memory, intelligence and sensory centers like hearing, smell and sight. Diencephalon consists of thalamus and hypothalamus. The thalamus plays a major role in regulating arousal and the level of awareness. It is the seat for pain and pressure. The hypothalamus regulates the temperature in the body. The midbrain connects the forebrain to the hindbrain and controls the reflexes for sight and hearing. The hindbrain consists of the cerebellum, pons and medulla. Now what about activities like walking in a straight line, riding a bicycle and picking up a pencil? It is the cerebellum of the hindbrain that coordinates all these muscular activities and maintains balance and posture. The next part is the pons that carries the impulses between the cerebellum and cerebrum. It controls arousal and regulates respiration. Medulla controls involuntary activities like blood pressure, salivation, breathing, beating of the heart and peristaltic movements of the elementary canal. The next part of the central nervous system includes the spinal cord. The spinal cord extends from the medulla of the brain through the whole length of the vertebral column and is protected by the vertebral column or backbone. The peripheral nervous system includes the cranial and spinal nerves. The cranial nerves originate from the brain and a few cranial nerves carry impulses to and from the central nervous system. Some cranial nerves are mixed while the rest are sensory and motor nerves. Spinal nerves originate from the spinal cord and all spinal nerves carry impulses to and from the central nervous system. Spinal nerves are mixed nerves. The peripheral nervous system receives as well as transmits impulses. 
the former is carried out by sensory nerves and the latter is carried out by motor nerves. Motor nerves control both voluntary and involuntary functions. Based on the functions performed, the peripheral nervous system is classified as autonomous nervous system and somatic nervous system. The autonomous nervous system includes motor nerves that control involuntary actions like breathing, beating of the heart and peristaltic movements of the elementary canal. Voluntary actions like muscle movement and blinking of the eyelid are carried out by the somatic nervous system.